a lot of things to consider before purchasing your first airbrush or your second airbrush or adding to your arsenal of airbrushes that you already have. What you're going to be using it for is the most important thing to consider. But you should also consider your experience using them and of course how much you want to spend. I will be covering some of the most important features of airbrushes that may influence your decision. I will inform you about the major features that distinguish different types of airbrushes. So without further ado, why don't we get to the video. External mix indicates that air and paint are mixed outside the airbrush. The air is directed over the top of a paint siphon, pulling the paint up and out. Air and paint come together outside the head. External mix airbrushes produce a larger dot spray pattern than internal mix airbrushes. Internal mix indicates that air and paint mix inside the airbrush. Air and paint mix together inside the head assembly or handle to produce a thoroughly atomized fine dot spray pattern. Single action refers to airbrushes on which the trigger controls only the air flow. The amount of paint flow is generally controlled with an adjustment of the needle position, usually with a small screw or nut towards the back of the brush, or with an external mix airbrush by turning the fluid cap on the paint tip at the front of the airbrush. Dual action means an airbrush in which the trigger controls both air and paint flow, generally pushing down the airflow control and pulling back to increase the paint flow. This simple maneuver allows the artist to change the width of the line and the amount of paint without stopping. Bottom feed refers to airbrushes where paint enters through a siphon tube or color cup attached to the bottom of the airbrush. This configuration is generally more versatile and enables the user to change colors quickly and use large amounts of paint without refilling. Gravity feed refers to airbrushes with smaller paint cups on top of the airbrush in which gravity draws paint into the airbrush. Less air pressure is required enabling slower movement which creates excellent control for fine detail applications. Also, some paints and lacquers require lower pressures. Side feed refers to airbrushes on where a color cup fits into the side of the airbrush. The side feed color cup rotates enabling the user to work on either a horizontal or vertical surface. The side feed also permits the user to achieve fine detail without the possible sight obstruction of a top mounted color cup. Start with an inexpensive external mix gravity feed if you are just beginning to learn to airbrush. It will allow you to learn the basic of airbrush use and the proper maintenance of a very simple tool. For details and weathering, you will eventually want an internal mix airbrush. Either siphon feed or gravity feed is fine. The determining factor is the volume of paint you will be working with. For small quantities or frequent color changes, a gravity feed with a paint well may be best. Surface preparation is essential. Make sure all the parts have been washed to remove the parting agent and any oils from handling. Use a solution of one part Dawn dishwashing liquid to 10 parts water. Spray it on, brush with a clean paintbrush, and rinse with water. Let dry. Use filtered water for all cleaning and have a spray bottle that has a built-in pump to pressurize them. Find these in cooking stores or at American Science and Surplus. Use the thinnest masking tape you can find. The stuff sold in artist supply stores is often much thinner and with less tack than the automotive hardware kind. Use Tamiya masking tape, but there are others, drafting tape types that are also better than masking tape because it has less adhesive. Cut your own tape strips using a sharp blade and a steel straight edge. Lay the tape onto a glass plate and cut strips. This makes for much cleaner lines. 
as the rough edge and adhesive bleed from the machine cut rolls is eliminated. Special modeling tape does not always need to be cut. Find what works for you. Remove the tape as soon as the paint has set. Many materials commonly used in arts and crafts and the hobby of model kit building, such as lacquers, varnishes, adhesives, sullivans, and acrylics can be extremely dangerous. This list is not complete. I therefore recommend that you determine what materials you are using and follow the manufacturer's directions for proper handling. Video Workbench strongly recommends that you contact the materials manufacturer to obtain a copy of their Material Safety Data Sheet, or MSDS, which gives all the properties of the product along with safety precautions and first aid instructions, and to keep this document on hand at all times when working with that product. So, without further ado, why don't we get to the video? Hazardous materials pose an even greater risk to children due to their lesser body weight and frequent lack of care following directions. Children should use this product under the strict supervision of an adult. Always use some kind of eye protection. Keep your work area clean. Never spray into the air vents of the compressor. Never spray near open flames, pilot lights, in stoves, or water heaters, space heaters, or any other heat sources or flames. Do not point at anyone or at yourself. Do not smoke, drink, or eat while airbrushing. Avoid putting your fingers in your mouth while working when you paint. Wash your hand and clean your fingernails when finished. Keep cuts and open wounds covered. Stop work at the first sign of dizziness, nausea, headache, blurred vision, or skin irritation. Seek fresh air immediately. Contact your physician if the symptoms persist or are severe. Please take note. An open window does not provide adequate ventilation when working with hazardous art materials. When working with these chemicals, you should have an exhaust ventilation system which actively removes vapors from your work area and vents them to the outside. Many factors must be considered when selecting a proper ventilation system. I suggest that you contact the local branch of the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, the NIOSH, or the Occupational Safety Health Administration, OSHA, for publications dealing with ventilation systems. Select the proper respirator for the materials you are using. Be sure it fits properly. Too large or too small units are ineffective. Also, beards, mustaches, and other facial hair may interfere with proper fit. Keep respirators clean and maintained. Store in sealed containers to prevent accumulation of dust. Buy only approved respirators. Read and follow all manufacturer's instructions. I answer questions about airbrushing. I'm often asked through Facebook, Google+, email, and when people recognize me and know what I do, they ask me questions about airbrushing and usually I try to answer them to the best of my knowledge. The questions that I answer here are the ones that are the most common from tip dry, lubricating the needle, rinsing, pipe cleaners, and cleaning the cup, and more. So, without further ado, why don't we get to the video. Removing tip dry. As you spray, paint builds up on the needle's tip. This is the approved method to clean paint off. Dip a cotton swab into the appropriate cleaning solution. Gently insert the cotton swab into the front of the airbrush. Aim between the needle point and the needle cap. Spin the cotton swab around in your fingers and around the needle. Repeat as often as necessary until a cotton swab comes back clean. Repeat until clean. Finally, spray a little air to remove any residual cleaning solution. 
If you remove the needle cap, you can simply twist a cotton swab perpendicular to the needle. Why should I use Super Lube? When you're using a substance to lubricate your airbrush needle, you run the danger of some of that substance getting into the spray and onto your project. That's why you only need a little bit. The question is what will happen when that greasy substance reacts with your paint? Super Lube doesn't like to react with oil-based or water-based paints. That's why I recommend it. I know what it will do. If you use an oil-based lube, it might react with your acrylic paints. It'll mix like oil and water. Why do I need to lubricate the needle? The needle doesn't really need the lube. Rather, the needle in turn lubricates a little o-ring deep in the body of the brush that prevents blowback. It's really rather small, so it doesn't need much lube and it only needs to be lubed every now and then. Are airbrushes hard to keep clean? No, it's quite a simple task, though it might be difficult at first. Develop a regular maintenance habit of rinsing the airbrush with the appropriate cleaning agent for the material being sprayed between color changes. Thoroughly clean your airbrush at the end of the workday. Check out the appropriate cleaning guide for your brush. How do I rinse my airbrush? To rinse out the airbrush, simply flush it with the appropriate paint cleaning agent, Medea Airbrush Cleaner for water-based paints and Paint Thinner for oil-based paints. Never immerse or soak an entire airbrush. When using flammable cleaners, never flush the airbrush near an open flame or loose electrical wiring Always flush the cleaner into an appropriate container to deal with these materials. How often should I rinse my airbrush? You should rinse out the airbrush generally in between color changes, before taking a break and at the end of the day. Here's why. Wet materials clean up easier than dry materials. Rinse it while it's wet and you won't have to do a thorough cleaning as often as when it's dry. Rinsing between color changes is a maybe. If you're blending colors and working from light to dark, then chances are good that you won't have to rinse. If you need a pure color, then you will have to rinse out your airbrush. How often should I thoroughly clean my airbrush? It's easy to say that you should clean your airbrush at the end of each workday. However, you should thoroughly clean the airbrush when the inevitable buildup of dried paint begins to interfere with normal operation. For some people, this is once a week. For others, it's once a day. It should be noted that regular and timely rinsing of wet paint with the appropriate cleaner will lengthen the amount of time between thorough cleanings. In short, rinsing more means cleaning less. When I'm thoroughly cleaning out my airbrush, why should I use a solvent? Solvents quickly break up the molecular bonds paints form when it dries. I recommend acetone or lacquer thinner as solvents, but stay away from paint thinner. Paint thinner, in my experience, doesn't seem to work well cleaning airbrushes. Do not soak your airbrush in a solvent. There are parts and greases in other areas of the airbrush that don't take kindly to it. With that said, you should generally use only as much solvent as can be held in a cotton swab or in a pipe cleaner. Warning! Do not spray solvents through the airbrush. It's a bad idea. What about Medea Airbrush Cleaner? Can I use it to clean out my airbrush instead of solvent? There's a saying, the right tool for the right job. Medea Airbrush Cleaner is great stuff and it works really well on wet paints and materials. Paint is a suspension of pigment in an adhesive substance. When the adhesive is wet, you can wash it off with soapy water. When it is dry, you need something to dissolve the molecular bonds that adhesive creates. This is where solvents such as acetone or lacquer thinner come into play. Why should I buy the expensive pipe cleaners? For the price of 50 cents, you too can keep your sanity during a thorough airbrush cleaning. But wait, there's a noticeable lack of detached cotton fibers that will plug up your brush at odd moments. And last, 
but not the least, you too can keep those pipe cleaners from breaking in the most inappropriate of places. The cost of keeping your sanity at your location may vary. The real reason I say expensive pipe cleaners is to keep you from buying the craft items, the colored stuff that children make fuzzy reindeer ornaments out of during the holiday season. Craft items might melt in solvent. Could I use a small brush instead of pipe cleaners? Yes! In fact, that's a great thing to do. You can use an interdental brush in many of the places that you regularly use pipe cleaners. However, there are still times when you'll need a pipe cleaner, so you can't eliminate the need for them entirely. Incidentally, I know that Oral-B interdental brushes don't melt in lacquer thinner.